Hey everybody, in today's video, I wanted to go over the Lone Wolf Distributors TWF uh, full-size frame. Uh, gives you an option for you Gen 4 Glock builders or owners out there that want to do, whether you're building one up or if you're just adding a slide or want a different frame option. Um, I, I recently picked up a Grey Ghost Precision uh, Gen 4 slide, this is a uh, G17 size, because I wanted to use it on my uh, G34. The only Gen 4 Glock that I do own is my uh, G34 here. Um, and I figured since uh, I, I really, G17 is probably my favorite frame. Um, I only own one other G17, and really I don't shoot the G34 a whole lot. It's not really my favorite gun. No real reason why, it's just nothing... I think maybe because my G17's got the Parker Mountain uh, machine comp on it, it just shoots so much smoother than the G34 um, with its standard barrel and no compensator uh, that I just ended up shooting it more. So um, in addition to that, my G17 I have, being that it has the Parker uh, PMM comp on it, uh, you know, it's not something that you want to keep removing and taking on and taking off. Uh, and I do have a nine millimeter can that is currently in jail which hopefully by the end of february uh maybe march hopefully i'll get the approval on that one um i'm just shy of 200 day wait on that one right now thank you very much atf uh, but anyway um i picked up uh the slide and the barrel from them where they were having like a 60 percent off sale uh, and i just couldn't resist um i Wanted to be able to use it, and if anybody doesn't know, as long as you have a full-size frame, uh, the G34 and G17 slides are interchangeable. Very similar to how you can put a G48 slide or G43 um, slide on top of a G48 slash G43X lower. Um, the difference you see with the G34 is it has the extended dust cover up here. Um, and all you got to do is it slides off slide it on and you have a G17 for the most part so anyway I bought this upper and uh, I, my intention was just to swap it back and forth um, be able to use it as a suppressor host as a G17 uh, and then as I had it I thought you know I really kind of want to just um, I really just want to kind of have a dedicated frame for it so went online uh, I will say that um, I'm, I am not a fan of the biggest fan of Gen 4s or Gen 3 Glocks because I really do not like the finger grooves. And it's not, they feel fine to me. I just, I really don't like the way that they look. Um, but even still, being that this is a dedicated Gen 4 slide, uh, I wasn't going to have to get the lower. So come to find out, uh, there is not. Gen 4 uh, guns are really unsupported. Um, tons of support for G3s or Gen 3s and a lot of support for Gen 5s, obviously being the newest version. But it seems like Gen 4s are maybe the redheaded stepchild of generations when it comes to Glocks. Uh, I cannot find a lower for the life of me, an OEM one anyway. Being that I'm not the biggest fan of the finger grooves, I thought, all right, well, maybe uh, there's some aftermarket options available. Now, I do have a Gen 3 G19 build I did based on Grey Ghost Precision's uh, frame. So, kind of seems ironic to me that GGP does offer Gen 4 slides, but they don't offer any Gen 4 frames yet. So, that's a little bit frustrating, um, but to be honest with you, uh, I am not the biggest fan of this frame. Uh, it is a lot. While the grip angle is different, which I know a lot of people say that um, you know they complain about the steep grip angle, um, the, the GGP, GGP frame is slightly reduced. But the way that it feels in my hand, it, it feels a little too blocky. Which, if any, but a lot of people tell you that a Glock maybe feels blocky, but right around the front right here where your fingers go it just feels it's, it doesn't feel as good to me as a oem clock so um while while that was a little bit frustrating that uh i couldn't get a frame i wasn't exactly heartbreaking because i'm heartbroken about it because i'm again i'm not the biggest fan of ggp lowers at least just the way that they feel in my hand functionally uh it has been great so doing some more research um, going on the forums, I could not, for the life of me, nobody could give me any suggestions on Gen 4 frames. And no matter how much Google Foo I used, um, I couldn't find anything out there. And um, 
by accident, I came across Lone Wolf Distributors that they actually make this frame here. Again, it's their TWF. They do offer this in a full size, a compact, even a large to accommodate, accommodate the G21 um, and some of the larger frame uh, Glocks. So what's kind of unique about this frame also is that it can accommodate both Gen 3 and, by, and Gen 4. Uh, and, and they do that by offering this insert here. So um, the recoil spring assembly, is, is it's different between the two generations. Um, the Gen 4, uh, it, it is larger. I can't really show you because I don't have the, my, my, my Gen 3 has the comp on it. So, um, but it, it's smaller. So if you were to put a Gen 3 slide on this gun, you would see a large gap right here. Don't know if it makes a difference uh, functionally, uh, but aesthetically, I know a lot of people wouldn't like it. I probably wouldn't like it either. So what Lone Wolf did was they made this insert that simply just snaps into place. Um, and once you do that, you can run a Gen 3 on there and you won't have that gap because you have this filler taking up that space. So me being a Gen 4, I went ahead and popped that out of there right away. So um, obviously you can see here between uh, the two generations, uh, between the OEM frame and the Lone Wolf distributor, as you can see, let me go ahead and zoom this out a little bit. You can see uh, the grip angle is quite a bit different. Um, it's it's not so steep, or I should say it's more steep on the Lone Wolf. Um, it gives you a little bit of a better, I guess, pointability, which I can't really say yet because this isn't fully assembled yet, um, but it does feel pretty good in hand. Uh, in addition to that, um, no finger grooves, um, and it comes with a plastic magwell. Um, some people may complain that that's not the best material to make it out of, but I uh, just kind of came with it. I, I do like magwells, obviously I've done videos on them, um, but it is, uh, it's, it's kind of one of those nice things, nice things to have that are included. I don't really care if it's made out of plastic. Time will tell as I shoot if it starts getting beat up or chewed up or whatever it may be. Um, as you see, I got mine in, in gray, uh, though they do also make them in black. I don't know if there's any other colors or not, but um, in addition to having the magwell that comes along with it, you get two different back straps. So uh, the back strap that I decided to go with here is the full, and I will give you a quick little overview of how you can change this out and how simple it is. Um, so as you see here, you have a pin, um, and if you own a Glock, you probably have the Glock Armorer's tool. So you will just go ahead and push the pin out. Once you push the pin out, you get this piece here that pops right out. And then you can take the magwell, and you see it's grooved. So that slides right off there. There, then you have the magwell uh, that is off. And I guess if you don't really like the magwell, you can also run it uh, without it. Um, it is not what secures in the back strap, so you could go either way. Magwell, no magwell. Uh, maybe I'll leave it off, we'll see. So if you wanna change the back straps now, um, if you'll see inside of the frame here, because here is, here is the, uh, the flat back strap. As you can see, this little clip here is what you are seeing. Let's get my light in there right there. So in order to release that back strap, all you gotta do is put a little bit of pressure on it. Find that little notch, which I know my light's not picking it up so well, there we go. And you will just apply some downward pressure, kind of back and down. And it breaks free. That's where the latch is picking up. And you can just slide it off. Then, slide on the new one, it secures in place, and then you have the uh, flat back. So it, it does look a little goofy to me um, with the, the, the straight back on there. Um, plus it, did, it does feel better in my hands to have the little bit of the hump there. So this is the one that I'm gonna go with. So uh, once you put that on there, uh, it's just do the order reverse. Take your magwell, you can see it's grooved. Slide it on. Take your retainer piece here. Line that back up, which just like that. And then your plastic pin is tapered, seems to be tapered on one side. So you'll stick that in. Take your Glock Armors tool and just push it on home. And again, 
things always tend to go smoother when I'm not uh, when I'm not running video. There we go. It's just tension, so it doesn't require any type of tapping or anything like that. Being it's plastic, you really wouldn't want to. Um, so I'm gonna do a little more in-depth video of this when I get uh, once I get all my lower parts lower parts in. Uh, it is New Year's Eve. I have had some of the parts for a couple days from Primary Arms um, Midway. Uh, I'm still waiting on them along with the iron sights uh, to go on the slide here. But uh, one other thing that I did want to mention is the rail system here. So if you'll notice here, what I came to find out is your rail system, while the full forward and aft ones are standard Picatinny, the one in the middle, as you see, is slightly more narrow. So my plan was to run a Surefire X300 on this. Um, I ha only have A model. So this is my turbo with the A model, uh, and even my U is the A model also. So typically with A models, and this may be different from B models, um, it fits in a groove. Well, considering that that middle slot, which is where this should go in order to, to position it correctly, because you see it picks up the notch right there, it will not lock in because that is too wide for that slot. So easy enough when you get a Surefire lighter, it also comes with a universal uh, plate here. And so I swapped that out and when I put it on, um, it was very, very loose. So what I come to find out was that if for whatever reason, I don't know if this is under tolerance or what it may be, or it maybe it's just more friendly with the uh, B style attachment where you've got the thumb screw. Uh, I have not tried putting my TLR on there, uh, which has a, um, a screw on design also. But if you have an A model, um, you are going to have to change this over from the, I think they call it the, the lever latch to the rail lock. So the rail lock is a completely different system. Um, I will go into, uh, I'll make another video based on that one, but I can tell you. So I mentioned how it was uh, loose when swapping over to the universal plate. Um, I'm talking about this loose. I mean, all A's tend to be a little bit loose, but this was you know, gives you a little bit of forward and back motion, but you can see here, this is literally loose on the frame. Um, so I had to swap swap over to the rail lock system, which um, I have never had any other pistols that required me to do that. I was able to just st um, stick with the uh, lever latches, again, I believe what they call it. Uh, but what's good about the rail lock is once, uh, if you have a gun that's like this, when apparently this frame is, um, you have the option of being able to lock it down. Doesn't make it quite as uh, quick to attach as you would get with uh, having the A model where you can just pull the latch down and um, slide it off your gun. Uh, but you know, how often do you really need to do that anyway? It's only a couple extra steps, but now it does lock it down. No more wiggle, definitely more secure. So just something to be aware of uh, if you decide to get one of these um, Lone Wolf Distributors TWF frames, and again, it may be different if you have an X300 uh, B model, uh, or maybe even work a little bit better with the TLR1. Um, but I haven't tried either one of those, so just something to be aware of. So uh, that's it for today's video. Uh, I am going to go more in depth uh, with the overall build once I get my uh, the rest of my lower frame parts in. Um, early next week so hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it please like uh, add some comments if you'd like to definitely enjoy interacting with you uh, you folks out there uh, and hope this uh, helps somebody out who's looking for a gen 4 frame solution uh, being that that doesn't seem like to be that the gen 4s are really supported that much anymore so uh, thank you again for watching have a good day